Okay, hi, welcome. My name is Yeniso Hernandez. I'm a VCABA and I'm here, I'm here with ABA Exam Academy and we're going to be going over different topics on ethics. And uh, don't we love ethics? Let's get to it. But before we start, we wanted to remind you that we're doing a course on March 9th, 2020 at 8.30 p.m. We're excited. We're going to go uh, in depth with task list J and Debbie, do you want to say anything else? Guys, I just want to say we've already had two amazing courses so far and we are really pumped up. We really want to get this started. Um, Yenisbel does a great job at it. I'm also there. I'm in the chat answering questions. So if you guys want to get in our course, just go to our website. Um, you can click on, there's lots of options to go there. You either go to the services tab or you can go where it says shop now and then book. Um, I think it's a very, a really good price. Um, lot, I, we've gotten a lots of great feedback. So just go ahead and book the course and reserve your spot. Okay. If you have any more detailed questions, you can always ask at the end of the video today or just shoot us an email or send us a message or anything like that. Uh, just to review, remember the strategy that we always use, like we use here, is we go over the section. Good night, love you. We have a big emphasis on more questions, just like we have here. In Okay, guys, so... Let me just double check that everybody's muted and let me go really quick to the disclaimer. Uh, just remember that the meetings are meant for us to everybody have an open discussion on collaboration because of that sometimes uh, just the mistakes are made. So double check everything we say with your books, Cooper especially, and free, refrain from sharing any test questions that you have encountered. Also today specifically we use the ethics for Behavior Analyst, the third edition, we know it as Bailey, Bailey's book, and also obviously the code. La, the, the way I like to teach ethics, and I think it's more fun that way, I like to present a mock question, fairly not that complicated, uh, and then go over the actual code. Why? Because ethics is one of those things that we say, oh, you know, it's sort of common sense. Like we, we should know it. But then it can, when it comes to the details, when going over the questions, then that's when we might get it wrong. So let's do that in this one. And I'm going to read it and then you can say it out loud or you can just put it in the chat and we're going to read it out loud. Okay, guys? So Ingrid is a newly certified behavior analyst. A private, school, a private school hired her to conduct an evaluation for a student named Carlos. Ingrid asked her supervisor, who is my client in this case? The supervisor should say, Carlos, Carlos and Carlos' parents, Carlos, Carlos' parents, Carlos' teacher, Carlos, Carlos' parents, the first grade teacher. So what do you think the answer is? A, B, C, or D? Don't be shy. If you are shy, go ahead and put it in the chat. I will call out the, uh, the, I will call out the answer, but I will not mention your name. Because see, we are all about participation here. So I have one for C. I have another one in the chat for A. Uh, usually, I like to have three answers and then move on. Who's the other brave person? B. Uh, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. B. B as in dog? B as in boy. Oh, B as in boy. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't reply clearly. Okay, so this one is one of those tricky ones that seem easy. We have one for A, one for C. And one for B. We are all over the place on this one. So I think I picked a good question. The answer is actually C, Carlos. Carlos' parents and Carlos' teacher. Does anybody, whoever got it right, do you want to explain why you made that decision? If not, I'll explain it. Yeah, I can. Okay, Mel, go ahead. Is it Mel? So in this case, 
Yeah, Mel or Melissa, that's fine. Okay, go ahead, Mom. Okay, so in this case, because Carlo is the client, and then Carlo's parents, especially because if he's underage, then they're going to need that permission from him, and then the teachers need to be in communication because they're the one that's going to be following the plan. So they are um, part of the whole group. Yeah. The client. Perfect, my friend. Come on, guys, dance it out. Go, Mel. Go, Mel. Thanks. Nice job. Yes. Okay, so you mentioned a couple of things that were key, and I have a, a pretty much a sum up of what you just said. So what we can sum up from what Mel said is that who, who is the client, whomever the behavior analyst provides services to. So let's, let's imagine the therapist at the school. She's gonna work with her client, and obviously she still needs to contact the teacher and the parents like Mel explained it really good is the child is a child is it's underage so the parents need to be involved okay uh, another another key thing here to keep in mind um, let me ask you a question is the private school like let's say whoever hire you would be uh, I don't know who would be the main person but let's say that the private school uh, the principal hire you would the principal be considered a client? What do you think, guys? Yes. Yes, according to here, look, uh, it, it's the individual person, which is Carlos in this example of the mock test, parent, we've said it, organizational representative. So like you mentioned, the, in this case, I would say it's, for example, it could be the principal. The public organization, the private organization, the firm, the corporation. Where did I get this information from? From Bailey, page 64. You can always go and double check uh, there, but that's mainly the information. Okay, so, oh, another key thing that I wanted to point out, code 2.2, 2.0 is basically behavior analyst responsibility to clients. That's this little area that we're covering. And uh, like the summary that we can talk about is that behavior analysts have a responsibility to operate in the best interest of the clients. So now we just covered who is the client, but it goes a little bit deeper into the topic. So that's what we're gonna do in the last, next mock question, okay? Uh, the school district hire a behavior analyst let me see, let me take the shot out of the way one second, guys. The school district hired a behavior analyst, Sophia, as an independent contractor to conduct an AFBA for a student named Anthony. Sophia turned in the report to the school. The family contacted Sophia directly to ask her for the report but the school district told Sophia not to directly provide the family with the report. It's a little long, but I think uh, we can reread it if you need to. What should Sophia do? Okay, I hope you have the picture in your head. Now let's look at the choices. Sophia should tell the family to ask the school for the report. Since Sophia already gave the report to the school, that's A. B. Sophia should give the report to the family as soon as possible. C, Sophia should not have direct contact with the family. Or D, Sophia should recommend the family to hire her to conduct another report. This would allow the parents to have their own report. So, what do you think, guys? A. I have one for A. Thank you. A. I have another for A, and another body person in the chat told me B. Okay, that's three. Anybody else? Last minute, counting down. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, let's go. Let's see the answer. The answer is actually B. Nice job. This one is trickier, if you noticed. So let's break it down. 
why is B and not A? Sophia should give the report to the family as soon as possible. Actually, this, this whole scenario, I took it directly from, from Bailey. And I did it because, again, ethics is complicated. And sometimes I don't want to add things from my own experience that could be wrong. So I wanted to make sure I would make something that, that was clearly, that I could tell you for sure that what I wrote was correct. So here is what uh, Bailey explains. He explains that the, the responsibility of behavior analyst responsibility to the client is when multiple parties are involved and could be defined as a client, a hierarchy of parties must be established and com communicated from the onset of the defined relationship. We have to make a distinction between the person who we are treating and the source of funding. That is good in app, you know written like that but now let's go back to the mock question does anybody wants to explain why they would pick b and not a now that we read the explanation from bailey here's the explanation that bailey said bailey said that it is the uh, behavior analyst responsibility to let the parents know and uh, to give the parents the um, the report. Why? Because the school and they said it in these words, the school uh, the school's intentions might be that they want to give the report last minute so that it doesn't give time the family to get a lawyer or a representative to be able to go over the report the report with time. So the point is. Her main client, who is the main client in the hierarchy? The school or the, or the family? The family. The family. The family, who is the child. So they, you need, when we read the questions, we need to go and look at it in hierarchy of who is the most important one. Another key thing that they mentioned was obviously we're not gonna tell the parents to conduct another report because you already made the report for that child. And they also mentioned that although when you get in, when you make that decision, you just need to be aware that the school might never hire you again, obviously. But the thing is that is that it's, you, you don't do what the source, the people who's paying you, tell you to do, but you need to put the clients uh, first. Basically, I just summarized it this way. First, in priority, when you see mock questions or in real life, is the individual person. So the service recipient, in this case, the student. Second, is parent or guardian of the service uh, recipient, in this case, the family. And third, is the public organization who hired, hired you, in this case, the school. Sometimes, and it's important to have it this way because sometimes they also put questions that are about uh, you need to decide whether it's the best interest of the parent or the best interest of the interest of the child. So you just need to read the scenario very carefully, carefully, and the question to to make to put it in this in the right order. And that's just the best way to do it. Okay. Go ahead. I would also I would also assume that the behavior analyst had gotten consent from the parents. That's you know kind of first and foremost in doing any type of assessment. So therefore, it doesn't say it, but I mean, as a uh, behavior analyst, that's part of your ethics initially. So therefore, they would be responsible to give the family a copy of that report. Yes. Uh, yes. Although we don't want to assume that because they might add something else to it, uh, but uh, but we know that for it, it is a law that we, we, it's an ethical code that we need to follow. And another thing that uh, thank you for mentioning that. Another thing that Bailey said is that in her case, in this person's case, she's used to giving the report right away within two days, and the school was pushing for her not to give it to them, so they would take longer. Um, okay. 
Thank you for mentioning that. Okay, so now we're gonna do like a sneak peek of what we're doing in the course is task list J09, and it also has to do with ethics. And um, let's go ahead and do it. Christy has a new client who is engaging in elopement. Mom reports that when she talks to him in a firm voice and gives him a demand, her son runs away from her. This has happened while walking in the sidewalks next to moving cars. What should Christy do? Select the best statement. A, she should conduct a reversal design. B, she should collect baseline data for at least three consecutive days before implementing a behavior plan. She should, C, she should conduct a B, A, B reversal design. Or D, she should collect baseline data for at least three sessions before implementing a behavior plan. Okay, guys, what do you think? C. C. I have one for C. I think I have two more for C. Three. Nice job. This was most easy. Yeah, because we've read this information over and over again, and I'm sure we have put it into practice. Who wants to explain it? So the right answer is C, you are correct. So who wants to explain it? I can. Um, so what I'm looking at, which you have below, like the dangerous behavior of him. So he's walking while walking in the side, in the in the sidewalks or on the sidewalk next to moving cars. So because that is a dangerous behavior and that's gonna cause harm if he goes into the sidewalk, then we need to conduct it as a BAB versus waiting for baseline data. Exactly, and thank you for mentioning those specific details because uh, here at ABA Exam Academy, our main goal is for you to know how to answer these tough questions. And when you go back and look specifically at what the question is saying and the scenario is saying, and you're able to basically highlight the key element, the key com, com, um, statements or words, then you're better equipped to answer the, the actual uh, question. So thank you, I appreciate that comment. It was really, uh, really good. Um, another behavior is SIB, which we all know about it, right? Okay, let's go again to the next one. Valerie is an experienced BCBA. When she sees a child having a tantrum in public, she gives the parents a pre-printed flyer with ABA techniques for the parents to follow. Select the best statement. A, Valer uh, Valeria should also give the parents her card for them to contact her in case they want her services. Valeria should only offer ABA techniques to people uh, she knows. Or C, Valeria should only offer ABA techniques to her clients. Or D, Valeria should also give her other therapist her flyers for them to distribute as well. C, I have one for C, let me see the shot. I think I have a couple for C in the shot. Am I right or wrong? We have C everywhere. Nice job, guys. I think you're right. So who wants to explain this one and give me the key things that you want me to highlight in the, in the scenario? Okay, I'll do it then. I can. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Okay, all right. So what we're looking at here is um, she is just seeing this individual out in the public and then giving them um, her information, which we're not supposed to do. And I mean, it just, to me, immediately just seeing C stating ABA techniques to her clients only. Like that's the, what stuck out to me, but then definitely the main word public, like seeing them out in the public is what I looked at to know that it was C. Exactly, right? So she shouldn't be doing that in the first place anyways, right? Um, okay, nice job. Thank you. Isn't there, is there also a statement about, um, you know, uh, 
trying to solicit business when the person's vulnerable. Isn't there something in the ethics about that as well? I believe so. I, I believe so, yeah. But we shouldn't be soliciting anyway, so not to the, not to the, to, yes. We will have to look at it uh, directly, but I, I believe you're correct, yes. But uh, other than that, we have, this one is a specific, uh, it's a code uh, 1.05, uh, which it says that behavior analysts provide behavior analytic services only in the context of, the, of a defined professional or scientific relationship or role. Basically, this means that behavior analysts should refrain from casual, casually giving advice to neighbors, friends, and relatives. So we gotta hold our tongues, especially those of us who are mothers and fathers. <laughs> It's hard, man. It's hard not to give your opinion like that. <laughs> okay, guys, this is it for us. Thank you so much. I just wanted to remind you of the, of the course again. If you can make it, it'll be fun, and we're going to learn together lots and lots and lots. If not, we'll meet uh, next week on Tuesday at the same time. Any questions or any other concerns? If not, we'll call it a night. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. You did great. Oh, thank, thank you, Stephen. I've learned from your guys' videos. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're so sweet. <laughs> Good night, guys. Thank, thank you. you Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.